Okay, so when I was talking about um, gracile and robust australopithecines, I uh, talked about the fact that there was a species of um, gracile australopithecine that um, gave rise or evolved into the first of our genus, the genus Homo. And the first of our genus Homo is called uh, Homo habilis. The name Homo habilis means handyman. Um, so at first, the, the reason that, that Homo habilis got its name is that it's the first of our ancestors, the earliest of our ancestors that was found with stone tools. Now, of course, this has changed in the last few years, um, but one of the characteristics of Homo habilis was its association with, with stone tools. And so those tools that are discussed in detail in your uh, chapter are called Oldowan tools. They're named for the Olduvai Gorge in Africa where they were found. Now, the earlier form of tools, Lomekwi, were also found in the east part of Africa. Both tools are categorized as unifacial tools, meaning that the, the, the uh, stone has only been worked on one side. And so what this means is, as uh, uh, Homo habilis or modern humans or whomever is working on a stone, they're going to prepare one side to make it in the form or the shape that they want to make it. And then when they are done making it in the shape or form they want to make it, they will hit the core, a, a large piece of stone, and they will hit it, and that stone will come off as a flake. And the, the piece that comes off, that breaks off from the rest of the, of the core tool, um, will be smooth. And so on one side, it's not worked. On the other side, it is. And that's why we have the name unifacial. So these um, unifacial tools um, are uh, much more efficient at exploiting the world than not having them, of course. Um, we can use these tools to do a variety of things. We can use it to scrape. We could use them to cut. Um, the uh, core stone that it was that these tools were made from, they can be used for chopping or pounding something, whatever it is. Um, and so um, having tools with Homo habilis, having a, the, the Lomequi tools with um, the gracile australopithecines um, show a level of intelligence and, and, um, and, and therefore an ability to uh, modify their environment that is new. All right, so some of the anatomical characteristics of Homo habilis that are a little bit different than what we see with gracile australopithecines. So <clears throat> there is a reduction in tooth size. So the, the molars of Homo habilis are a little bit different, in si a little bit smaller in size than the gracile australopithecines. Because of the reduction in tooth size, there is a small reduction in prognathism. So the face is a little flatter in the australopithecine on your left than in the gracile, or sorry, the, in the in the Homo habilis on your left, uh, than the prognathism in the uh, gracile australopithecine on your right. So let me write those on the board. So again, this is in comparison with gracile australopithecines. So. Um, 
reduced uh, tooth size. And reduced prognathism. Um, so I had also talked at, in regard to uh, trends um, having to do with the shape of the dental arcade, that in general our dental arcade shape uh, changes. Uh, in the earlier uh, lecture about the early um, hominids, I talked about the fact that the dental arcade shape is going to change from more sort of um, rectangular and that our earlier hominids um, have a more sort of narrow and long dental arcade shape. And as we get into the genus Homo, that dental arcade shape is going to still remain long compared to us and narrow compared to us, but it's changing. With the reduction in tooth size, the dental arcade length is decreasing. And we're going to see also a, a little bit of a widening of the dental arcade shape as well. Uh, as far as physical body size, um, Homo habilis is about the same size as Grassle australopithecines. Um, there is a reduction in sexual dimorphism. So the difference between males and females is, is going down. Um, and uh, there is an increase in brain size. Maybe the biggest difference with um, uh, Homo habilis versus uh, gracile australopithecines is an increase in brain size. So the body size didn't increase or didn't really change, um, but the brain size did. And so with these two casts, you can see hopefully a little bit of a difference in the overall brain size. Um, and so because of that, that brain size, body size ratio has changed. And so relatively speaking, Homo uh, habilis is much more clever than um, our gracile australopithecines. Okay. The last thing to bring up in this section, and it has nothing to do, well, it, it doesn't have anything to do with sort of the general shape of uh, Homo habilis versus uh, gracile australopithecines, but it has to do with the uh, fossils that have been found that are associated with Homo habilis. Um, there are very differently shaped fossil uh, skulls that have been found from the same part of the world and the same time period. And so there is debate about if these different um, fossils represent one species or two. And so there is this debate about whether we should lump them together into Homo habilis or whether we should split them into two species, Homo habilis versus Homo rudolfensis. And uh, so in the normal PowerPoint slides, I have a figure showing um, these different characteristics. Um, there's discussion in your textbook about this as well. And this comes into this discussion that um, is um, with all of our hominid discussion about this idea of lumping versus splitting um, that, that uh, is also presented in your PowerPoint slides, not only in regard to um, 
uh, homo habilis, but also in regard to uh, gracile versus robust australopithecines, and also about homo erectus, um, which we'll talk about later.